Hi, in this video, we're going to talk about the law of total probability. And before I do that, though, I want to, uh, I need to discuss another topic that's related to it. And I'm going to do that through the use of this example right here. So let's say we have a survey of restaurant customers providing the following information, that 67% were beef eaters, 21% were vegetarians, 63% were fruit eaters, 60% of the beef eaters ate fruit, and 80% of the vegetarians ate fruit. Now, I haven't asked a question, that's not really, and I'm not going to ask a question because I'm just trying to get, get set up to, to, to present to you this, this topic that I'm going to need for, uh, uh, for the law of total probability. So I want to draw a Venn diagram, and the first thing I have to do then is figure out well, how many, uh, what's my starting number, you know, how many restaurant comp customers am I going to assume that we started with. And again, I've mentioned this many times before, I'm going to try to start with a number so that I get, whole, so that I get integer numbers for each of the people in these different categories. And so if I started with 100, for instance, and that might be what you initially think. Let me start with 100 because I've got all these uh, percentages, you know, uh, that, that kind of indicate 100 might be a good starting point. But if you look at the last two lines, for instance, look at the, 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 the last line, 80% of the vegetarians ate fruit. Well, if I started with 100, the second line says 21% were vegetarians, and so I'd get 21 uh, would be the number of vegetarians. Then I have to take 80% of that 21 and I'm going to get a decimal. So maybe 100 is not enough to start with. Let's start with 1,000 instead. And sure enough, if you start with 1,000 and you go through this list of numbers, and again, you separate, uh, you know, look at how many people are in the different regions of your Venn diagram, you're going to get this, this Venn diagram. I'm going to leave it to you to, to show that you'll get this Venn diagram. Now, I want to focus on a, a part of this Venn diagram, namely this part where you have the zeros. And in fact, let me take out the set F and uh, this is really what I want to focus on, and that is that the intersection of B and V is zero. That's kind of the definition of vegetarian, right? That they're not going to eat eat uh, eat beef. So there are no uh, there there are no uh, outcomes in the intersection of B and V, and so I actually could have just separated B and V and written it this way uh, because there were no outcomes. And this is you know we would say that B and V are are then mutually exclusive events. So that's what mutually exclusive events means is that there are no outcomes in the intersection of the events. Now I can put the F, event F back in and the event, event F, you know, that I have somebody who eats fruit, of course going to intersect both B and V. So maybe I could put it in and have this kind of Mickey Mouse looking, uh, uh, looking Venn diagram. And then I'd fill in the numbers and you could go ahead and fill in the numbers uh, like this. Now let's, let's look at, um, so that's one thing that I want to talk about, mutually exclusive events, but let's take it a step further. Uh, if I look at the number of outcomes of B union V, then in this case I get the number of outcomes of B plus the number of outcomes of V. Remember generally the number of outcomes of B union V would be the number of outcomes of B plus the number of outcomes of V minus the number of outcomes in the intersection, but there are no outcomes in the intersection. And so in this case I just get, uh, I, I get the number of outcomes of B union V would be the sum of the number of outcomes in each of the individual uh, sets. And it's 880 in this case, and uh, of course we started with 1,000. And in other words, you have outcomes that are neither in B or in V. And so I'm going to say that this is a that B and V are mutually exclusive, non-exhaustible events. They don't exhaust the the two events B and V do not exhaust all the possible outcomes uh, of, of B and V. Uh, I'm sorry, of the sample. Uh, in, in fact, I have in red. The, uh, the outcomes that are neither in B or in V. So I have these non-exhaustible uh, events. Okay, so now if you want to write your Venn diagram this way, that's fine. Uh, originally we had the Venn diagram written with these, you know, this way. E either one, either of these is going to be fine. Um, you know, you'll be a, you're going to get the same answer if you use either this diagram or a diagram that looks like this. Okay, so that's what I want to talk about, though, was that these were mutually exclusive and these were non-exhaustible events. So now I'm going to look at an example where we have uh, mutually exclusive events, but they're exhaustible. They exhaust all the possible outcomes of, uh, of the sample space. So let's look at this example. Suppose that two factories supply light bulbs to the market. You are given factory X's light bulbs work for longer than 5,000 hours in 99% of cases, and factory Y's light bulbs work for longer than 5,000 hours in 95% of cases. Factory X supplies 60% of total bulbs available, and factory Y supplies 40% of total bulbs available. Now, since, I'm, since uh, factories X supplying 60% of the bulbs and factory Y supplying 40% of the bulbs. Every bulb comes from either factory X or factory Y. 
And then I have this question, determine the probability that a purchased bulb will last longer than 5,000 hours. All right, so now uh, I, I know that if the bulb came from factory X, it's going to last longer than 5,000 hours with a probability of 0.99. If it came from factory Y, it's going to last for longer than 5,000 hours with a probability of 0.95, but I don't know whether the bulb, the, the randomly selected bulb, came from factory X or factory Y. This is, is, is the point of the problem. Okay, so now uh, let's start. I'm going to just start with a, a, a big number here. I'm going to, uh, in fact, I'm looking at, if I started with 100 bulbs, then 60 of the bulbs would come from, from factory X, but then I have to take 99% of that 60, and I'm going to introduce some more decimals, uh, in fact, two decimals, and so I'm going to add two zeros to the 100 that I would normally start with, and let me start with 10,000, not normally, but that I was thinking of starting with, and so let me start with, say, 10,000 bulbs. If I started with 10,000 bulbs, since 60% come from factory X and 40% come from factory Y, I could draw my, my Venn diagram this way. And again, a bulb cannot come from both factory X and factory Y. So those, those, that's, that's mu X and Y here are mutually exclusive events. Now, uh, X being, of course, the, that the, the bulb comes from factory X and Y being the bulb comes from factory Y. Now, I've accounted for all of the bulbs. And so these are mutually exclusive, but they're exhaustible events. And so we would say that that X and Y then form a partition. And when X and Y form a partition, then I'm not going to draw circles like this. There are no bulbs outside of X and Y. And so I'll just put a, a vertical line down the middle of the, of the rectangle representing the, the sample uh, space. And to the left of the rectangle would be factory X's bulbs. And to the right of the, I'm sorry, to the left of the vertical line would be factory X's bulbs. And to the right of the vertical line would be factory Y's bulbs. And I like to put in how many bulbs we're dealing with. So I would uh, add a little bit to the headings here, and I put an X above the X. I would put 6,000 because I've got 6,000 bulbs coming from factory X and 4,000 bulbs coming from, from factory, uh, factory Y. And then I look at, well, what is the probability that I'm, that I'm seeking here? And it's that a purchased bulb will last longer, will work longer than 5,000 uh, hours. So let's use an L for the event that the bulb will last longer than 5,000 hours. And you could draw a picture like this. You could put a set L in here. You know, in, for each of factory X and factory Y, you have some bulbs that last longer than 5,000 hours and other bulbs that don't last that long. But again, since that's just kind of a, uh, uh, you know, a, a, a cut and dry yes or no type thing, it, instead of drawing the picture this way, I'll separate, uh, I'll separate based on event L using a horizontal line across the, um, across the um, uh, uh, sample space. And so I've got this partition. This is what my partition is that's going to look like. This is, this is the partition of the, uh, of the sample space then. So I've got cap X, I've got cap Y, and then within cap X I have uh, an L, an event L, that the, uh, the bulb from cap X lasts longer than 5,000 hours, and an L prime, the complement of L, the, the, event, uh, the, the event that the bulb burns out before 5,000 hours. Same with, with uh, cap bulbs from factory Y. Okay, so now let's populate the, uh, let's populate the, the, um, uh, the Venn diagram. So in the top left block there, I, I'm talking about bulbs from uh, factory X that last longer than 5,000 hours, and I know that 99% of the bulbs from factory X last longer than than 5,000 hours, and I've got 6,000 bulbs from factory X, so I've got 6,000 times 0.99 or 5,940 bulbs uh, from, cap, from factory X are lasting longer than 5,000 hours. I've got 6,000 total bulbs, and so the difference there would be 60, so there would be 60 bulbs that did not last uh, 5,000 hours from, cap, from factory X. Likewise, I do the same thing with bulbs from... Um, from factory Y. I've got 4,000 bulbs and 95% of them last longer than uh, 5,000 hours. So that's 3,800. That leaves me with uh, 4,000 minus the 3,800 is 200 bulbs that don't last 
thousand hours. And then I'm ready to calculate the probability, and this is pretty easy to do at this point. I'm looking for the probability of cap L, so I look at the number of outcomes of cap L, that's the 5940 plus the 3800, divide that by the number that I started with, which was 10,000, and I get 97.4%. So, so that's, the, uh, that's, that's my answer. Now let me go back to this line, and, and I want to separate... Um, uh, to, to make my, my point here, let me take that expression, that last expression, and separate it into two terms this way. And I would do that because now the 5940 over the 10,000, that would represent a probability where the 5940 came from, where it came from the intersection of, of cap X and, and L. So this is the uh, probability of L intersect X would be the 5940 over 10,000. And likewise, the 3800 over 10,000 would be the probability of uh, L intersect Y. And so I could write the probability of, of cap L as the probability cap L inter intersect X plus the cap probability cap L intersect Y. This is the law of total probability. This is what's meant by the law of total probability. It's in the situation that you have some events that form a partition of the sample space. And then you can write the probability of, of an event as the, the sum of the probabilities of the event intersecting each of the um, each of the parts of the partition there. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one way to write the law of total probability. Uh, now let me uh, put the numbers back in because I want to make another observation and now I want to focus on this probability of L intersect X for a second. So the probability of L intersect X is the number of outcomes of L intersect X divided by the number of outcomes in the survey or the sample space. So that's this 5940 uh, over 10,000. Now, what I want to do is, let's, uh, just to make, you know, to, again, bear with me for just a second. Now, you'll see where I'm, uh, I'm going with this. Let's compare that to the probability of L given X. So, that's the, we have the probability of L intersect X, but now let's compare that to the probability of L given X. And, the, and, and when I'm given X, it means I'm ignoring everything except what's in X. So, um, so I, I've just got those 6,000 bulbs that I'm talking about. And now I want to look at, well, uh, how many of them last longer than, than 5,000 hours? So I'm looking at a ratio now of the number of outcomes in L intersect X divided by, so the denominator is what's changing here, is the number of outcomes of, of, of X. So the, the probability of L given X is 5940 divided by 6,000. So when you look at the probability of an L intersect X and versus the probability of an L given X, the difference is going to be in the denominator there. Your, the numerators are going to be the same values. It's going to be the denominators that are going to give, that's, that's going to represent the difference. And so you have to know, you know, when you're given a problem, whether you're talking about an L intersect X or whether you're talking about an L given X. And then, of course, the probability of X is just the number of outcomes of X times the, uh, I'm sorry, divided by the number of outcomes in the survey. That's just a, a basic, that's the basic probability fact. Uh, in this case, that would be 6,000 uh, divided by uh, 10,000. And so, uh, if I go back to this equation that I'm starting with, and I, I, I separate it into, into these two terms, the 5940 divided by 10,000 plus the 3,800 divided by 10,000, and notice that each of those terms I could write as a product. So the 5940 over 10,000 I could write in the way in the in the bottom ex equation. That's I could write it this way. Of course, the 6,000s would cancel off the way that I have it written, and and likewise in the second term the 4,000s would cancel off. And so I could write it this way. Uh, and, and the reason I would, I, I'm bringing this up is because the 5940 over the 6,000 we just talked about was the probability of L given X and then times the, the 6,000 over, over 10,000 was the probability of X. Uh, so I'll highlight that again. And so uh, you can see you know, these are all equal to each other. These all, all these expressions are equal to each other. So I could have written the probability of, of cap L this way as uh, the probability of of L given X times the prob probability of X plus the probability of L given Y times the probability of Y. So I have these two different ways. Notice uh, one final comment, I'll, I'll, I'll color code some things here. If you look in red, the probability of L intersect X, we, we know that that's equal to the probability of L given X times the probability of X. Likewise, the probability of L, give, L intersect Y is the probability of L given Y times the probability of Y. And so there's nothing really new in any of this. The law of probability, law of total probability, there's, again, there's nothing really new. It's just a, an application 
to a certain situation where you have a partition of the, um, of the, of the sample space. Okay, uh, finally I just want to make a comment that uh, I actually got this particular example from uh, Wikipedia. Uh, if you'll do a search of law total probability on Wikipedia, you'll see this, this particular example. Okay, so uh, that does it for law to total probability. We're going to move on and I'll see you in the next video.